Dear friends, we gather this day on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. May we always dwell on this land with respect and peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory his, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For this uh, particular reading uh, about the wedding at Cana, I'm going to follow the pattern uh, last week uh, that uh, included the story about Jesus being baptized. And that is, I'm going to look at the text at a few brief things that you might find interesting, and then I'm going to talk about weddings. And uh, maybe as I talk about weddings, uh, it will evoke a few memories of yours. And after the service itself is concluded, maybe you'll want to share some of your wedding stories then. 
And then finally, I'll come back to what the text might be saying to us for now. This is the first page of the gospel of, of the wedding at Cana. And I want to draw your, your attention, first of all, to the fact that this is the third day, and then to the fact that it takes place in Cana. And uh, I'll go to some deeper concerns after that, but first those two. Uh, so it's odd that this is called the third day, because if you were to count, uh, John was baptizing on the first day, and then the next day he baptized Jesus. The day after that, uh, Jesus called his disciples, Andrew and Peter. And then the day after that, Jesus called more disciples, including Philip and Nathaniel. And so I suppose this should be the fifth day rather than the third day. Uh, and so people have wondered what that's about. And one theory is that this is an older story that had already been written down that John has incorporated into the full gospel account. Uh, and another idea is that this is in fact intended to be a resurrection story that just like Jesus uh, uh, rose on the third day, this is to be a story that points to uh, new life. And so it's a deliberate use of that third day to get us to think about that in advance. Uh, so um, I want to talk about Cana. Uh, Cana is a village in by the Sea of Galilee. It's about 10 kilometers from Nazareth. It appears twice uh, in the New Testament, here and then in, in John's Gospel, chapter 4. And a number of sub significant things happen in the, this, between these bookends of Cana. First, there's this uh, wedding, and then uh, Jesus and Nicodemus meet, and Jesus tells him that he must be born from above. Then Jesus meets the woman at the well and tells her about living water. And then finally, a uh, royal official stops him and asks him to heal his child. And uh, Jesus initially resists uh, because he thinks people want to see signs and wonders. Uh, but when it's clear that the uh, man loves his child, uh, Jesus heals him. So that, those are the bookends of Cana. But within this, here we are at the wedding, and uh, there's this conversation between Jesus and his mother. Uh, and in a way, you can see it's a brusque conversation. Uh, she points out that they have no wine, and uh, you would think that, uh, uh, that even the brusqueness isn't hidden. Woman, what concern is that to you and me? Uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we think of our Father in heaven, uh, and it's a very intimate word for Father, and this is hardly an intimate word for Mother. Uh, and so what is this brusqueness about? And there's some theories about that. One is that wine at a wedding is kind of a frivolous miracle, and Jesus is pushing back about that. Uh, and another is that he doesn't want to become a dispenser of goods or of services to people. So, for example, uh, he didn't want the royal official to be chasing after wonders. And after the feeding of the 5,000, he pushed back when people started following him, wanting more bread. Uh, another is here in the quote, my hour has not yet come. In other words, there's a time and a place for everything, and it will, it will happen as it's supposed to unfold. Uh, but there is a controversial un interpretation uh, that is called the scandal of divine reluctance. And that is, Jesus is reluctant to do this miracle. Uh, there's a lack of wine, and he's reluctant to jump in until he's prevailed upon. And the, the, this is called the scandal of divine reluctance, because then if you look at God, um, is God reluctant in our prayers to answer when we say they have no food, or they have no shelter, or they have no affordable housing? The world has extreme needs, according to this view, and where is God's extravagance, such as the extravagance display, displayed in this wedding banquet? are the prayers of the people about prodding God into generosity. So that is one view. And maybe as I'm saying it, you're already thinking how you would push back against it. Uh, you might, we might go with the mind, hour has not yet come, that, there, that things will happen in their proper time. Or we might go with how God relies on human compassion God relies on us to be the hands and feet of Christ. And it's all wrapped up in a bigger question about 
why is there suffering in the world if God has the power to change water into wine? Now, if we move on to the next page, uh, there, there's a, uh, I wanna talk about this water being uh, turned into wine. It's, it happens in the Jewish uh, uh, jars for, for ritual washing and purification. And uh, some have interpreted into this a sense that what Jesus brings is superior to what was before, that this wine is better than the ritual of water purification. And this, is, uh, this has a, a, a double-barreled name. It's called supersessionism. And that's basically a big word for one tradition superseding another. And uh, in my role as an interfaith officer, I'm really aware that in the Abrahamic traditions, this is the big no-no uh, to speak of the next tradition as that it supersedes this one. And so Christianity has in it some elements that hint at that the, this tradition is better than the one that's gone before it. Islam has it as well, uh, but both traditions also have a recognition of being side by side and honored. And so, for example, in Christianity, uh, followers of Jesus are the new olive branch that has been grafted into the ancient olive tree. Now, this is pertinent for us because uh, Rabbi Daniel Michaelberg will be preaching uh, at our service next Sunday. And I'm very aware that when someone from another tradition sits alongside us and hears uh, our scriptures, uh, they hear things, we hear things with them that we might not notice. Uh, on our own. And so this is one of those things where there's a hint of one tradition being superior to another. So uh, the final thing I would want to come to is uh, in the last paragraph about keeping the good wine until now, it moves into uh, what this does in the plot. And that is it, he is still convincing his disciples that he is the one to be followed. Uh, he, uh, not everyone knows about the water turned into wine at the wedding, but this is really about the disciples becoming committed followers because he has revealed his glory and they believe in him. I'd now like to turn to talking about weddings. In a way, it's important that this is a wedding because a wedding symbolizes the abundance of the kingdom that was in the Isaiah reading. And in a way, it's kind of peripheral. It's about a whole bunch of other things. Uh, and so uh, I want to ask you to think about the weddings that you've been to. Maybe you've had uh, one uh, or maybe more yourself. Um, and uh, when I think about weddings, I think back to the earliest uh, pictures in my parents' photo album. Uh, I remember seeing those pictures back when uh, the cameras were, camera was a large thing. And uh, my mother kept a photo album. It was black pages and she wrote underneath in white pencil crayon what was happening in the picture. And uh, one of the earliest pictures was my parents' wedding. Um, the first wedding I was at, I was the ring bearer and my sister was the flower girl. Uh, this was an aunt and uncle. And then the next wedding, we did that again, but it was uh, uh, at the time when my grandmother was in the hospital dying of cancer. And so the whole wedding party went to the hospital and I've never forgotten that. The first time I was asked to participate in a wedding, it was a uh, one of my best friends and I was asked to do a reading. And this was the gospel chosen for their wedding, uh, the, the uh, wedding at Cana. And the preacher did a thing that I, I never forgot. He said, what he did was, he said, just like water becoming wine, two ordinary people become extraordinary to each other and bring that out in the world around them. And I thought, wow, I am totally going to use that. And so uh, the first wedding that I officiated at, they just cho they chose that as the gospel. And I did my variation on uh, two people become uh, extraordinary to each other. And that's God working through the marriage. Um, I found that doing marriage preparation was an interesting thing because uh, people would want to choose their scriptures or I would ask them to choose their scriptures and they, they didn't know their Bible very well, and they would ask, is there a cheat sheet? And uh, if you remember the Book of Alternative Services with all of our liturgies in it, there is indeed a cheat sheet. There is a page with scripture passages that are suggested, and uh, it includes this passage about the marriage at Cana. 
and often couples uh, chose that passage and uh, uh, they, they were just relieved because they found that the Bible, um, they didn't know what to pick. And I, I have found as well that someone will ask me, what are you preaching on this Sunday? And I'll say the text. And they say, no, 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 just give me in a sentence what you're going to say. And uh, so, so there's an impression in the world that we just talk about what we want and then we find the little pieces of snippets to uh, reinforce it and hold it together. When it's actually the other way, the texts are given in a cycle and then you try and make sense of how do they, how do they address us in our world now. And so that's what the Sunday readings do. And at a marriage, you actually do get to pick the text. And that's where you discover that the Bible doesn't necessarily lend itself to saying just whatever you feel like having said. What does this text say to us in our time? And to set our time, uh, Monday is Martin Luther King Day. And so Sunday is Martin Luther King Sunday, observed in many churches. Um, a volcano exploded uh, uh, by Tonga in the Pacific Ocean, and uh, hostages were taken in a synagogue in the Dallas area, and uh, they have been rescued. Uh, plus, there's all that we deal with in our own personal lives and to this ongoing uh, awareness of not being able to be together in person. Uh, you might go to this idea of how do we pray and are we prevailing upon God to do what we want? Or are, are we seeking to be empowered by God to join in as the extraordinary becomes, the ordinary becomes extraordinary? How do you think this text uh, works for you? Uh, I do like that idea of the ordinary becoming extraordinary. Uh, and that we might have that kind of role. But as uh, you've seen from the notes I've made, uh, there are many other ways that the text could be used. Uh, I think that it actually is a good text for uh, a wedding, uh, especially because it celebrates uh, joy and abundance, and that's a beautiful way to begin a relationship. But in the end, I want to go back to this idea of the third day, uh, all these stories are, are included as a way to point to the resurrection. And then at the end of John's gospel, it says this. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So the idea behind this story being there at all is that we might find life in his name in all the circumstances that we face. Amen.
continue now with the prayers of the people. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Give us wisdom to navigate the challenges of our times in ways that build each other up rather than hurting each other, and in ways that strengthen our relationships rather than eroding them. As we observe the week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray that your church may be a true home for all the peoples of the earth. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human oh, family. Supposed to go. Help us to see through the illusions that separate us and to fully appreciate our common humanity and need for each other. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Open our eyes to the sins that our culture and institutions commit daily. Open our eyes to the opportunities to make kinder, more inclusive and just societies. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Help us to cultivate the profound respect and awe that this planet deserves, and to work with humility to honor both its power and its fragility. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Give wisdom and inspiration to those setting policy and strengthen strength, courage, and stamina to those working daily to restore our health and safety. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Give us the courage to accept the inherent fragility of our existence and to engage with each other and our world with boldness, generosity, kindness, and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this country, for Elizabeth, our Queen, for Mary, our Governor General, for Justin, our Prime Minister, for Doug and Francois, our Premiers, and for Jim and France, our Mayors. Give them clarity, strength, and wisdom as they carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those struggling with health challenges, both physical and mental. We ask especially that your love and support be felt today by Robin, Maura, John, and all others known to us. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask your blessings today for all those who minister at St. John's, including Gary, Catherine, John, Gordon, Gregory, and Carrie. We remember the broader Anglican Church of Canada especially today, Reverend Paul Gibson, who passed away yesterday, and his contribution as the principal author of the Book of Alternative Services as liturgical officer of the Anglican Church of Canada. We also remember today the Primates World Relief and Development Fund and the Canadian Lutheran World Relief. In our diocese, we remember the today- the place where you can see the and the work and ministry of diocesan ecumenical officer, the Venerable Linda Hill. We pray also for our diocesan newspaper, Crosstalk, and its editor, Lee Ann Williams. We also remember St. John's Smith's Falls and their priest, the Reverend Canon Catherine Aska. In the World Anglican Communion, we remember the Church of England. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you have called us into one body to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant us your grace to live together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Take from us all hostility and lack of understanding that we may bear witness to the world, to that generous love you have revealed to us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to pray with me the Lord's Prayer in the language of your preference. Two languages are indicated here and feel free to use the language of your choice uh, in addition to these languages. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.